This is the yellow box. It's not really a box as it is more of like an external monitor, but in a nutshell, what this is, is a touchscreen tablet designed specifically for live streaming. It has two HDMI inputs on the top for two separate camera feeds or a feed from say like a computer if you want to broadcast what uh, you're doing on your computer say you're like demonstrating a piece of software or just wanting to show off your Photoshop skills online. You also then have a third input for a camera or some other kind of feed which is a USB so you've got a USB as an option as well if you want that. In the instructions it details that it could be used for a third camera. If you use a HDMI to USB converter, then you can have three camera inputs on this device. You also have a 3.5 millimeter jack audio input. So if you wanted to line from say like uh, an audio input device or something like that, so you've got like a few microphones all going on at once and whatever scenario. But also if you've got say like some sort of AV desk thing going on and you want to get the audio clean straight from that desk then you can also use it that way as well. The audio from whatever video feed that you are inputting via these HDMI's or the USB will also be fed into those channels so say like you cut to HDMI 1 you will get the the audio with that video and everything. You also have a USB-C for power, you can hot charge this device and also to keep it alive, because um, it does have a battery in this thing and the battery runs for about three hours uh, approximately, but say like you've got some portable phone chargers with you, say that you've got the right uh, voltage on those things, then you can hot charge this device to give it more longevity out in the field. It's also good for if you're say working within a set location, you know, you've just got it fitted next to your like computer setup or whatever and you're streaming via that, then you can just plug a USB-C in there to keep it perpetually running throughout the course of you using it. And also for in that instance, you also have an Ethernet uh, port on here. So if you wanted to eliminate any issues with Wi-Fi connectivity at all, then you can just uh, connect straight into the internet source via an Ethernet cable. You also have a HDMI out. So you can plug it into a monitor for a bigger preview of what it is that you're broadcasting. Looking at the bottom of the YOLO box, uh, we have an audio out. So that is for monitoring your audio overall when you come to come setting up your audio levels or just when you want to monitor during your live stream or your recording or whatever. You also have a SIM card drawer. It does come with the little pin and everything. It comes on the back of the little uh, manual book that comes in the box. I, yeah, I ripped that off, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure, uh, I think I'm going to have to return this at some point, I hope they don't mind. But to get the little SIM card draw out, you do have that little uh, proprietary pin thing to kind of pull it out and everything. Make sure you don't lose those, they're very valuable. In the box you also get one of these bull head connectors, so you can screw that to the bottom of here, then mount this directly on top of your camera. It's really nice that they've included this in the box actually, because usually this is an accessory you'd have to buy separately but uh, YOLO box have uh, kind of just like done you a favor there and just kind of included it with. And then after that, we have an SD card slot, which uh, is useful for two things really. It's useful for recording because you can record a 1080p MP4 file of whatever it is that you're broadcasting, uh, which is really good for if you want to say, bring it to online later and just upload it straight to YouTube after you've done your stream and everything. But you can record something and then immediately play it back for your live stream. I think that's brilliant. So say like that you've got a guest and things are running a bit late, you know, things happen and then they are all of a sudden like, right, I'm sorry guys, I'm gonna have to go. You can quickly just grab a few words from them, hit record on the YOLO box, get them to say a few words and then you, when you stop recording, that recording will then immediately be available on the SD card for you to play back later. So if it is very quick turnaround like that, it's, you know, you're going live in say like five minutes and somebody can't stick around for any more than five, then that is a very good option for just getting that in the can and then producing it for your live stream. Because another thing that is really good about having this SD card port on here is that it offers you another channel. And what that channel is for is for pre-recorded content. So not only can you record on here and then play that back later, but say you've already got a video that you've edited previously on your computer on a hard drive, 
um, you can upload it onto the SD card that you put into the YOLO box and then the YOLO box will be able to see that as an option for you to play back during your live stream. So say like you've got a, um, a demo video of some kind, whether you're showcasing a new product and you've got a really cinematic kind of unveiling video, then you can upload that onto the SD card and then offer it to your stream through the yellow box. The only limitation of the SD card thing is that you can only offer up one video at a time. That doesn't mean to say that you can't offer up multiple videos during your live stream. It's just that while you're live, you will have to basically delete out one of the videos that you've already played in order to then replace it with what next video you have coming up. So if you are planning to do that sort of thing, you've just got to budget for time to allow yourself to just basically get the other video ready. And now that brings us to the vision mixing capabilities that are built into the Yolo box. And that is its main feature, not just the live streaming side of things, but also just making a show of your live stream. This is touchscreen. You can visually see each of your feeds on screen. And you've also got your program output at the top in like the bigger box. So it's really obvious that that's what's going out. But you've got your potentially four feeds all running at the same time. There's even a few surprises in there, like a scoreboard that you can make up. It's very generic, but say like you're live streaming a sports event or something, then you can, uh, put the names of the teams on there, as well as keeping up to date with the scores and everything. Just as like a simple solution, I mean, it's great that it has that feature installed in it. You can also do graphics overlays um, in the form of like uh, PNG stills. So say you've got a PNG with uh, a transparent layer on it. If you've got like a watermark you want in the top corner or something, then you can do that, which is great for if you're just wanting to have your brand constantly present on screen whilst you're obviously broadcasting. You've also got a range of different transitions that you can choose from. Again, they're quite generic and you can't customize them, unfortunately, but they are there. So you do have the hard cut if you just wanna keep it simple and basic, but you also have the crossfade, which is quite nice sometimes just to ease people into uh, different feeds or, or video clips that you're gonna be playing. And then you have your wipes in various directions. You also have some like, uh, crossfade zooms as well, which are quite fun. But coming back to the vision mixing aspect of the yellow box, your audio does feed through on these HDMI inputs as well. You do have that audio in, which is very useful for if you want to say line into an AV desk or something or whatever scenario you have in mind, maybe you're more comfortable with just plugging the microphone straight into this to you know cut out the middleman, so to speak. But what is quite tricky is that you can only output one audio feed at one time. So if you have it on automatic, what that means is that whatever video feed you are cutting to, that is the audio feed you are gonna get. So say like I'm on camera and I'm talking to you as I am now, and then I wanna to cut to my video and my video has audio on it, or even if it doesn't have audio on it, it will then mute me and it will then focus all audio attention to that feed. Now, if you're wanting to do, say, like something that's more just you talking and you're not really bothered about the audio from your video clips or your other feeds or anything, then you do have the manual option of selecting which of your feeds you would like to dictate where the audio comes from. But say like you're wanting to more uh, do like a piece to camera and then occasionally you'll cut to say like a computer feed where you're demonstrating a piece of software or something or showing off a PowerPoint presentation for like a keynote sort of scenario, then that is possible as well. You can then talk over your PowerPoint presentation by just selecting whichever one of the HDMI audio inputs you want to dictate the audio from. Also, if you want to be a little bit more secure um, with cutting between your different video feeds, there is also a setting in the menu whereby you can set it to a double tap as opposed to just a single tap. The single tap is really good for just quick and kind of just getting it done, but then the double tap is great for if you want to be more precise and more decisive. I also just want to talk about the form factor of the Olo box. I mean, we've seen a lot of products with this sort of form factor before, like the Atomos Ninja 5s and all that. Uh, it's, it's basically an external monitor and it's quite a nice monitor as well. You can't sadly control the backlighting on it. So it's kind of like a, a single setting for how much light it outputs, but it's really bright. So I think it would be really good for outdoors in all honesty. And because you can mount it directly on top of a camera as well, it means that not only can you like 
set it up next to your desktop or whatever and have it as like a, a funky little interface at the side of your you know, setup and everything. But you can also just set it up on top of your camera for when you're out and about. So as I was saying earlier about streaming in the outdoors, and you know, hotspotting from your phone, or if you've got a SIM card you can put in here, then you can use the mobile data from that. It becomes a very good option for that sort of thing. Um, just going out and about, streaming what you're doing, but on a high quality camera of your choice. Also, just the fact that this is so portable, say like you're a one man band and you've been commissioned to produce like some live streaming content. The Yolo box would be good for that because it's so small. Um, so you can bring your camera, your microphones, your lights, but then you don't have to bring your laptop bag with you. You can just slip this into your camera bag as well. Um, bring whatever power supplies you need for this if you need them, if it's gonna be running over three hours. And uh, if you say you've got your three camera angles, then you plug those straight into the HDMI and the USB, and then you've got your three angles. And if you wanna show like a demo video, like something that they provide, then just make sure you bring an SD card with you and then have them kind of like upload it on. Obviously bring the SD card adapter with you. Um, or if they could email it to you, you could like preset all this and just bring it with you on the day so you know it's working and everything. And then you can play their demo video for them as well. I think that'd be really impressive. So, I mean, say that this misses out on a few features, that would be quite good. This is still a really powerful product and offers quite a bit for being a streamer who wants to be flexible, portable, but also just like be running multiple feeds all at the same time. So if you think the Yellow Box might be a product that would suit you, uh, be sure to check it out on our store page. There's loads of information on there. There is a link in the description to that. But also if you have any questions, then feel free to uh, give us a call at Wex or send us an email, or alternatively, you can leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can with all the information that you could need. Now we make loads of content on this channel, uh, Wex Photo Video. So if you want to stay up to date with any product releases around photo, video, and uh, streaming, then do subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on anything. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.